Welcome or welcome back to the Keys Podcast, formerly known as the Transaction Care Podcast. I am your host, Lillian Hernandez, but you can call me Lily. And in this episode, you know, I'm going to keep it short and sweet as I'm still easing my way back into the podcast world. I am, though, approaching my two-year anniversary of podcasting and As we reach that milestone, I'm going to be unveiling what is ahead for next year with the show. Um, But until then, thank you for listening. You can also watch the show, the video portion of the show on my YouTube. So if you just go to thekeyspodcast.com, the video and the audio all lives there. And most importantly, sign up for the newsletter. This episode is actually inspired by a newsletter that I sent out a couple weeks ago that got a got a good response. So I figured, you know, it must be the right message for the right time. So rather than just keeping it for the newsletter crew, (laughs) let's make it a podcast episode. So let's just get straight into it. And the episode is called, Are You Taking Care of Yourself? So I want to take time to give you pause and be still. Breathe in, breathe out. One more time. Breathe in, deep breath in, deep breath out. All right, let's try this again. How are you doing? I know quarter four is underway and 2025 is nearing in quickly. Yes, we can all tell time, right? (laughs) But are you taking care of yourself? For me personally, I had some major adjustments. I had to make some major adjustments to my daily habits and mindsets. And I'm going to break three of those down for you guys. And pretty much how I've adjusted in order to be more joyful, productive, and energized. Because we all know being self-employed, or for those that know, know, running a business, being self-employed, running a team, whatever the the case may be, the work you do on yourself is more impactful than the actual work you will put in during those nine to five hours. And if you're not taking care of yourself, there's a good chance all the things beneath that are going to fall apart or just not feel right. So with all of that said... Let's jump into the three major aspects of life that I've reconfigured, readjusted. And sidebar, I do love a good iteration, uh, but this was not intentional. <laughs> but since it's all since it all worked out that way, I'll just call this the three B's. And first and foremost, one adjustment that I did make recently in order to just take care of myself is to start eating breakfast. I was noticing a pattern in my mornings this last few months. I just turned 40 in April, so I've been really intentional and mindful about paying attention to my body, whether it's in good shape or I'm sore or my energy is low or maybe I'm easily ticked off. You know what I mean? What is going on in my life? Is it is it the stress of work? Is it the stress of money? Or am I just lacking something in my morning routine. And it wasn't until about two weeks ago that I said, you know what? I haven't really been eating breakfast like I normally do. So let me, before I even check my emails, no matter what time I wake up, because I'm going to be honest, there are some mornings where I'm wide awake early and ready to take on the day. And there's some days where I just sleep in and I'm just like, I don't have it in me, but I'm going to do my best, even if I'm starting at a later time. But I realized, especially on those days where I was frantic and urgent and just discombobulated, I was not eating breakfast. So I took my own pause. I went to the store and I was like, what are some things that I can eat for breakfast that won't, you know, make me tired, but would just give me enough energy to go on with my day. And then I can see how that unfolds. And I never really ate breakfast on a consistent basis. And I realized that in those last couple of weeks before I started doing it consistently, that 
I needed more energy in the mornings and I decided this is the the a new commitment I'm going to make for the rest of this year. You know, at least for the next 21 or 28 days, however many days it takes to make a habit, but I want to just kind of run a mini experiment on myself, right? And just see how this impacts the rest of my day. And this may not be for everyone. Also, take what I say with a grain of salt. You do you and you find your things. But for me in this moment in time, I realized I need to eat breakfast every morning. And I have. There was a day where I skipped and everything was just like thrown off. And I was just like, okay, there's something to all of this. So (laughs) let me stick to it because Prior to me eating breakfast consistently, which was just two weeks ago, a lot of times I was eating dinner fairly early and then I would snack throughout the night. But then my first meal wouldn't be until about 12 p.m., sometimes 2 p.m., simply because, you know, I was just getting my day going at bare minimum, gratitude, fix the bed, get straight to work or just get straight to my desk and sit there overwhelmed (laughs) unfocused, depressed, anxious, nervous, excited, joyful, whatever emotion I was feeling or feelings I was going through or situations I was going through, I I was doing it all on an empty stomach and trying to force myself to make this all work. And I will have to say one way I've been taking care of myself that has worked so far so good is eating breakfast. And I know I can improve on the choices of foods I eat, but I just needed to start. So then I can adjust as I go, incorporating more fruits and vegetables. I still do my vitamins. You know, I've been incorporating other things, but we don't have to get into all of that right now. But the next three, the next B in the three Bs that I was discussing is the Bible. You know, I grew up in a fairly... I don't want to say religious household, but I definitely grew up in a church, semi-church God household where praying was mandatory. Growing up with my grandparents, with my grandpa, 7 p.m., we prayed, even if it was just, even if it was just me, my brother, and him. Sometimes my uncles would join, sometimes whoever was at the house would just join, but everything stopped at 7 p.m. And Then I went to Catholic school from sixth grade to 12th grade. In my early 20s, I was involved in in a Christian church. So I've I've dipped in, you know, I've had my share of church and religion and God and the Bible, but it wasn't until I got older where I really had to figure out what that meant for me. Like, how do I want to define this or how how does this, where does this fit in my life and and what am I going to do to either maintain it or let it go? And just the other day, you know, as I'm going through all of these changes and entering new seasons, and of course the new year is approaching, I realized that, (laughs) hope you guys didn't hear that. My window is open right now. So forgive me if you hear any outside noises, but reading the Bible is something that I knew I wanted for myself. I just didn't know when it was going to come back into my life. And honestly, I never really read the Bible like that. I just would go to church, whatever verse they talked about, highlight it or put a book, you know, mark it or whatnot. And then I would go on about my day. But I knew as I was entering these new seasons in my life, I had to armor myself with a little, you know, heavier artillery. So I was cleaning my nephew's room and... I was moving things around and I found a stack of Bibles. He also goes to a um, Catholic school at the moment. And I was just moving his books around and I was like, oh, he has a couple extra Bibles. Let me just take one for now. If he needs it back, I'll give it back. And I had forgotten that, I guess, in the midst of all of the cleaning and moving things around, that it was my Bible that I had grabbed (laughs) because when I finally sat with it, I realized when I opened it up that it had my name on it from high school. So it was my Bible from high school that I've just had. And, you know, I I don't know what would happen if I ever threw away a Bible. I just feel like that's 
a sin or <laughs> like I'm not trying to find out. But I truly am on my journey with learning to lean on God and strengthening my faith and learning to trust. I haven't sat with the Bible in almost two decades, like truly. And honestly, I was afraid to sit with the word because of the changes I knew that would be required of me in order to grow. And yes, I am a serial avoider, hence all of this direct work on myself. But now at 40, I am ready to accept what God has in store for me. And I do believe that a part of that is reading the Bible and at least understanding the principles that the Bible has to offer. I don't know if I agree with everything that's in the Bible, but again, I'm in a place where I'm open to learning and understanding and basing the lessons on where I'm at in life and trusting the word for what it is at that time in my life, you know, and, and I'm okay with challenging things and asking questions and being curious, you know, I don't think life has to be so rigid of it's the Bible or nothing. Like I, I really do feel like God has given us the free will to, to question, to challenge, to evolve the word or to provide other perspectives, you know, and that's why the commandments are like, thou shall not judge, right? Because we're all going through different things at different times. And some messages will resonate with you today or tomorrow, next year, or never. <laughs> but for me right now today, I had to take the next step and get to that new level of prayer, of building my faith and being you know, know what it is, knowing what it truly is to, to trust God. And again, I, I don't, just to reiterate, I don't really claim a religion, but I do believe in God wholeheartedly. And I do have faith in this life and in this process and what is in store for me. And I've been in this season of just embracing my stillness and learning to listen to God. So in the quiet times when I feel like, oh my God, business is so slow. Or, oh my gosh, I'm running out of money. Oh my gosh, I have so much debt. So I'm learning to, to not be one in the scarcity mindset, but two, I'm also learning to not, to make sure my default setting is, is complaining, but rather gratitude and seeing the opportunities in every situation. I'm not perfect. So it's still, I'm still a work in progress, but I do know every day for the last five years, I woke up, prayed and, or said my gratitude, read my daily devotionals, occasionally journaled. And that was it, you know, that I just go on with my day, but now the Bible is actually slowing me down to have those intentional purposeful mornings in order to you know, take on the day and all of the, on all of its parts. That's, you know, one of the parts, one of the things I've said in my prayers recently is I'm grateful for all parts of my day because, and I'll get to that at the end of this episode, but truly the more I am armored to face all challenges in life, the better I, I feel. And in the moments that I may not be fully prepared, again, another opportunity to just learn and grow from. And me reinserting the Bible into my life, I feel like it's just going to give me, again, a stronger foundation to, to stand on and to push forward. So that's the second B. We can talk about that in a whole separate, you know, whole separate episode. And for those that you know, maybe don't believe in God or don't have a religion. This is not me pushing it on you. This is not me trying to save you. I think we all have paths that we're on individually. Um, but I just do hope that, you know, hopefully one thing I say in this episode resonates with you in, in a positive manner to help you in, in whatever, wherever you're at in life and in your journey. But for me right now, it's opening the Bible. And this is a new, brand new part of of learning God for me where I actually am choosing it. I'm not being forced to read the Bible or I'm not being told to read the Bible. This is my choice to open the book. 
and learn about the word and learn about the principles that the Bible has to offer. So again, find your thing and do your thing. <laughs> no judgment. And if this does resonate with you, reach out to me. Let's connect. Let's talk. I'm willing to, you know, continue to build community. And if it is, you know, if, if real estate is the vehicle that that provides us this community, then so be it, you know, um, because there are a lot of things that we are all dealing with that can be overwhelming, that can be depressing, you know, and, and there's so many topics I want to talk about, which is why I did change the name of this show, because I do feel like the purpose of this show or where I am at in life is more than just a conversation about real estate. Is real estate the vessel or the vehicle? Am I the vessel and real estate is the vehicle? Possibly, perhaps. It's all unfolding as I speak right now. But without stretching this episode too much longer, let's talk about the third B and how I am taking care of myself. And, you know, I also want you to think about one or two things that you can change right now to take care of yourself for the better, to, to get towards whatever it is that, you know, is your ideal or desired outcomes in life. Everyone's life is different, you know, but I also feel like we all deserve a chance to experience the joys and, and the amazingness that life does have to offer. So finally, uh, with all of that said, <laughs> the last thing that I've been doing to take care of myself in a great way is uh, embracing the word budget, 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 budget. So I used to hate the word budget because I just didn't like to feel restricted in things that I did or places that I went, I think because growing up, I was fairly sheltered, right? So as I've gotten older and become now a 40-year-old woman, I'm realizing um, I'm having to undo and deprogram some of the things that I clung on to growing up. And the word budget was one of those things. And I hated the word budget and I'm still working on it on a deeper um working on the deeper meaning behind the resistance, behind my resistance towards that word. But I will say I need a budget for all things. My time, my money, my business. I mean, you get the idea, right? And being disciplined with my spending, earnings, savings, and investing has brought me more peace, more peace of mind than doing nothing and thinking I was in control. Let me reread that. And I'm actually going to be reading this from my newsletter email that I sent out. But it's being disciplined with my spending, earning, savings, and investing has brought me more peace of mind than doing nothing and thinking I was in control. That was a big realization for me because one, I would be so, my money traumas had such a tight grip on my spending habits, my lack of spending habits, my overspending habits, that I was just spiraling, spiraling. And sometimes I'd be moping and sitting on my couch like, what is going on? What's, you know, how am I going to get out of this? What am I going to do? And it wasn't until I just let go, literally just let go and now letting God and just saying, you know what? Well, I already have every, I already know what my expenses are, but I'm over here, you know, paying it, paying this one, out of, just paying things out of order, not prioritizing my, my spending, my money, not knowing how much I was making. Cause when you are self-employed that you don't have a fixed income, you know, when you have a, a salary, you, you get an idea of like, well, I can expect X amount of money each week and base your budgeting on that. For me, I'm self-employed. So one week I could make 400 one week I could make nothing one week I could make 2000 one month I could make nothing like it, it really just fluctuates it also matters how much work I invest in the business as well but through all of these changes and, and having spent this entire summer really reworking myself and rewiring my brain and being more mindful and intentional and understanding like how am I taking care of myself and what are the main things that are impacting me the most and holding me back? What, what is the cause of my depression? What is hold, you know, who do I need to talk to? What do I need to read? What do I need to watch? What do I need to unsubscribe to? 
And it really, there's so many more things that I'm doing to take care of myself. For instance, fitness, which I'll get into maybe in next week's episode, but it was starting with just these three things in the last month that have really just made my zest for life, my desire to get up and get things done that much more quicker. And I'm just, I just look forward to it. And I just didn't think I would ever get to this place where I would be so grateful for my emails. I'd be so grateful to sit and record a podcast. I'd be so grateful to not have money. I'd be so grateful to have money. I used to sit in deep, just darkness in my mind, surrounded around money and a lack of faith. And looking back, I'm like, well, well, probably because you were hungry. It's not to say I didn't have food. It's just I wasn't prioritizing eating at the right hours, eating the right foods. I wasn't prioritizing my faith. I wasn't learning how to be faithful. I wasn't budgeting my time, my money, my all things, my business, you know, and I had my priorities all messed up. And taking, a, you know, taking time these days and really being open to my own corrections, you know, and feedback that life has given me in these past 40 years and moving forward now into this new decade and new season of my life. There was no way I was going to take so much of that, for lack of better words, trash into this new decade. And I feel like I've shed a lot of those burdens and those weights in a short period of time, because I feel like as soon as something clicks, I'm just like, I got it. There's no more dwelling. There's no more being sad for this moment. It's like, it's go time. Let's get the plan in action. Let's get it moving. Let's make it happen. Let's go. And taking time again, to be grateful, to celebrate your wins and to take the failures, the losses, the sadness as feedback to improve. But that's just where I'm at in life. It might be easier said than done for some, but just know that one, thank you, you know, and thank you for allowing me to share where I currently am at with you all. And I really do wish the rest of this year brings you more joy, wins, and love. You know, just know we're in this together. I want this show to be a a home, a place where you can tune in on a weekly basis and say, hey, you know, I know I could go there and feel like I'm talking to a friend or listening to a friend and I'm going to start my week off encouraged and empowered, uplifted, and just ready to take on the world, even if it is a scary and overwhelming And maybe I'm not as prepared, but I'm going to do my best to get prepared. So, you know, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. But again, thank you guys for letting me share this. And I want to hear from you guys. What, you know, what are some things, one or two things, maybe three things, maybe 10 things that you need to do in order to take care of yourself better for the rest of this year? One day at a time. Yeah, 2025 is around the corner, but let that be there. Don't linger too far in the future that you ignore who you are today. So with all that said, (laughs) we all have the choice and the power to be happy every single day. Yes, every single day. Lead with gratitude and you will begin to see the world open up for you. Thank you again. This has been another episode of the Keys Podcast. If you want to get in touch with me, please do sign up for the newsletter. Visit thekeyspodcast.com. Also follow the Keys Pod on Instagram because that's where we will be posting clips, sneak previews, quotes, all those good things. And again, we're just easing back into this new season of the show. I don't want to force too much onto you guys. I just want to get back into the rhythm of things and making sure that I'm taking to making sure that I am taking care of myself first and foremost. And 
I had to realize that this show for a season back then needed a pause. It needed a change. And here we are today. We are back. We are back, baby. And new news about the show will be unveiled in upcoming episodes. But right now we're just, you know, easing back into things, getting encouraged, getting ready for the upcoming year, one episode at a time. So again, visit thekeyspodcast.com. And for those that are listening to this show or found me because of transaction coordination, I do have a community that I would love for you all to join. There's a free option. And then there's also a paid option. The paid option provides you with all of my training materials, templates, checklists, exclusive content that does not get shown publicly, as well as one-on-one coaching access to me within the paid platform. Right now, there's an early access for $7 a month. Once we hit 10 members, which we are almost at the 10 member mark, it will go up to $10. And then once we hit the 20 member mark, I all I have to say is join while it's $10 or less right now, because the price will go up in 2025. But for those that lock in the price of seven and $10, that's what you pay for life. So think about it. If you could pay $7 right now to change the whole trajectory of your life, would you do it? I'll leave that there, but you can visit learn to tc.com to join my community. And again, this is another episode of the keys podcast. My name is Lillian Hernandez, but you can call me Lily and I'm giving you the keys to unlock the best you until the next episode. And also go stream some past episodes while, while they're still there until the next episode, care for yourself, care for your wealth. Your time is worth it. Let's coordinate. Talk soon.